Hi and welcome to part 2 of our 3D shoe creation series. In the previous video, we explored the workflow for building the high poly and low poly model. In this part, we'll go through the process of creating UVs, baking, texturing and rendering. If you have not watched part 1, it is highly recommended that you watch that first. Before we begin, a quick disclaimer, this video isn't intended for absolute beginners. However, if you are new, you'll still find a lot of useful tips and insights throughout the process. If you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing and giving the video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel to grow. Let's begin with UVs first. For UVs, first we apply a planar mapping on the mesh and then we start cutting the UVs edges. Technically, you should cut UVs from the edges which are hidden, are on 90 degree, have material or layer separations. In this case, we start by cutting UVs by separating sole, then we cut UVs from the places which are either hidden or have layer separation. Also make sure to relax UVs after cutting. Even for knot and lace, I tried to cut UVs through non-visible edges. When working on UVs, some of them needs to be straightened. Like in this case, we will be straightening laces and some other parts of the UVs as well. This will help us to arrange UVs more efficiently and this will also make our UVs look good and professional. Once all the UVs are cut and relaxed and we have straightened some UVs, we will arrange them and this is how UVs may look like after you have arranged them. Select border of the UVs and apply hardened edge to them. Now invert the selection and apply soften edges. Once done, apply a directional map to the asset to make sure our UVs flow in the same directions. Make sure the UVs have correct orientation. They may or may not have same direction but ideally should follow the same flow. And now we are ready to bake our texture maps. For baking, we first merge the subtools that were made in single mesh at low poly stage or the subtools that are supposed to be baked only. Like in this case, leather, sole and some rivets are merged together. We will merge them then decimate the subtool. Make sure it's not highly decimated but enough to get good amount of details during the bake stage. Once done, we will give different and contrasting colors to different materials of the shoes. This will help us in baking ID map. Now let's match the names of our high poly and low poly assets. Just add low or high post fix after name of low poly and high poly parts respectively. Export the high poly SFVX with the settings shown on screen. It is advised not to change the name of the high poly FVX while exporting as it will also change the name of the subtool. Make sure you have exported low poly mesh as well in FVX. Let's bake texture maps in Marmoset toolbar. Open Marmoset and add a baker. Select load option and choose both high poly and low poly files. They will automatically be loaded separately in Marmoset. Now for maps, we'll bake normal, AO, convexity, cavity and vertex color. If required, you can select other maps as well. Give path to your maps and hit bake. We notice that our laces are not baked. This is because we made a mistake in naming the laces in ZBrush. Let's rename it as per low poly and add postfix high. Export the shoes again and bake again. Marmoset will automatically load the latest high poly FVX. Most of the issues we have while baking can be solved by increasing or decreasing cage size. Other can be cleaned in Photoshop. 
one more important point is to make sure that you increase the resolution and samples before the final bakes and check all the maps before moving forward. Let's clean out maps further in Photoshop. You can do it by overlapping maps with different case size or use paint, clone stamp or other tools in Photoshop. Repeat the process for all the maps and export them. Once the cleanup is done, let's import the low poly mesh and all the maps in Substance Painter. Plug the map into texture set settings. Adjust some of the settings like field of view, on the shadows, etc. Make sure play with the settings to get desired results. Now let's bake other required maps in the Substance Painter. These are essential for texturing. Once baked, we are good to go for the texturing stage. And now let's talk about how I approach the shoes for texturing. Before we start, we will first check all the maps and make sure they are clean and look good. Then we keep observing references carefully and start adding color and reference layers to our shoes. I start by adding some base color layers. After looking at my refs, I keep cycling between the materials, base color and roughness to see if everything is in sync and looking good. I also start adding grains, leather patterns and some other base details as well. Make sure to add some color variations with noise or crunch maps. This will help us to break flat surfaces. We previously baked convexity and cavity maps on Marmoset. Here I am using those to add texture details to some finer places. Not just procedural, but I also use manual painting for the mask or textures whenever required. You can see some of the paint effects in my mask. It's important to name the layers every time. This will improve your efficiency. 95% of the time, I own the roughness as well while giving my textures some color variation. Adding sensible amount of wear and tear is important. Make sure you don't overdo it or our textures may look unappealing or noisy. I suggest that you keep observing your references and add wear and tear accordingly. The same techniques were used to texture sole, add some color variation and reference variation. Also while using crunches, I take care to follow the proper direction, so that they don't look random and make more sense. For laces, I used plated alpha and gave it tune tone colors. Metal parts were kept simple with some color and roughness variation breakages. You can add stitches manually or with part tools and it is important to add depth to these stitches. To do that, you need to make a dark colored layer, call out the stitches mask with anchor point, blur the mask, call the stitch mask again but this time put the blending to subtract mode. Now add level effect to make the mask more visible. At last, add a dirt and dust pass. It is always ad advised not to do it too much. Just some subtle dust and dirt at some logical places.
Once you are happy with the texturing, move forward with rendering the shoes. Here we will use Marmoset to render our shoes. My technique of rendering in Marmoset is pretty straightforward. Add a background and select color as mode in backdrop section. Add some light, mainly sky, fill and rim and add additional light if required and if you want to highlight some specific areas. Keep revolving the lights around the asset to make sure you are using desired light setup. Case, you can add a shadow catcher or add a textured surface. If you use a textured surface base here. This can be a simple texture and can be found in Marmoset itself or import from Substance Printer. Export textures from Substance and import into Marmoset. Now add this material to the asset. Make sure to check the maps after importing. Depending on your asset and lighting setup, you can play with the camera and rendering setting. You should play with the values like exposure, contrast, saturation, etc. In the rendering setting, it is highly recommended to use ray tracing and if you wish, you can add frame as well. Once you are happy with the settings and light setup etc, press render to render the images. You can also render videos in Marmoset. That brings us to the end of the part 2 of 3D shoe creation series. In both the parts we covered high poly, low poly, UVs, baking, texturing and renting, taking the asset all the way to the final presentation ready results. If you found this workflow helpful, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel and share it with fellow artists, it really helps support the channel. Also make sure to join our discord server, the Ricci Art. it's a space to share your work, ask questions, get feedback and learn alongside other artists. You'll find the discord link in the description below. If you have any questions about the process or want to see a specific topic covered next, feel free to drop a comment below. Don't forget to check our part 1 if you haven't already and stay tuned for more industry focused 3D art tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.